right, and good evening, everybody, and welcome to Train World TV. And tonight is a great episode. It is going to be York Virtual Train Week. And uh, so we appreciate everyone joining tonight. It's going to be a great action-packed week all week long. And uh, let me go through the lineup this week before I get into tonight's uh, episode. So, to, uh, well, we'll start off with tonight, Tuesday. Introduction night, we have Lou Palumbo and Hal Miller from Classic Toy Trains, as well as my father, Ken Bianco Sr. And uh, Lou's going to go over uh, some topics about York, what's going on. Uh, Hal from Classic uh, Toy Trains is going to fill us up on the inside scoop. Wednesday night will be layout building and smoke night. We have Jeb Kriegel from Mega Steam Smoke Fluid and uh, TW Trainworks layouts. They're going to show some of their wonderful, beautiful layouts and uh, kind of give a, a whole tour. That's tomorrow night. Thursday night is the big kabang. Lionel, Bachman, Williams, Atlas, MTH, and Angela Trotta. You're not going to want to miss that night. Uh, especially with all the latest news and, uh, uh, I guess, uh, collaborations with MTH and Atlas. So make sure you're there on Thursday night, 6 p.m. And then also this week, we're going to try something new Saturday night. We have, uh, or I'm sorry, Saturday morning, starting at 9 a.m., we have uh, a virtual club layout tour. So we're going to do the tour of a couple of uh, uh, local clubs as well as a club in Jersey. So really action-packed, O-scale week of fun. Now, a uh, couple of things before we get in tonight's episode. We are doing a virt virtual York super sale. So make sure you sign up for our email sales if you're not signed up already. Uh, we already sent out an email today. So if you uh, haven't received it, sign up for our email sales. And also we have launched Train World Text. So you could go to trainworldtext.com or text the word train to 1-88-356-9682 to get all the latest deals and updates straight to your phone. So you could either do that or head to trainworldtext.com and you'll be in and get all these code words. You'll be notified about these virtual events. So just a great way to stay tuned with everything that's going on train related here at trainworld.com. And I, again, before we start the show, we're going to start it off with a raffle this time. And just like when we go to the York uh, fairgrounds. My father likes to hand out these hats or uh, some koozies or or mugs. We want to raffle off uh, two hats tonight. So if everybody in the chat, if you could put your zip code, state, and your name, and we'll pick out two winners for tonight's uh, event, and we'll see where everybody's from, and we'll uh, raffle these off tonight. But um, without further ado, I guess let's go around the horn, just introduce uh, uh, one by one. And Lou, if you want to kick it off, who you are, and we'll go to Hal next, and then my father. Do you take that thing off the top of my head? <laughs> yeah, you got it, Lou. That's there you it. go. After all, he got me on a secondary camera here. Listen, it's good to be with you folks again. Kenny Jr. and Kenny Sr. and Hal, uh, you always do a good job, and unfortunately, this is the third York that we missed. You started doing these um, video um, live Zooms that you started way back a year and a half ago already. It, it was uh, April, of, well, it would be a year ago now, and uh, it would be the third show we missed. Yeah. And um, unbelievable. I never thought that would be the case, but we're planning next year to have something. So uh, uh, October of uh, this year, it's going to be dependent on the fairgrounds. They have they have the first uh, the first say on whether they're going to have shows. And I feel by this summer, they'll get a good test of uh, having the fairgrounds open so they can entertain the other shows they have because they really are a farm show. 
arena and they have a lot of the pigs and the cows and horse races and everything else there. All we are is secondary twice a year there. We gather in this beautiful fairgrounds for many years. And uh, I'll tell you what, uh, we, uh, I miss you too. So <laughs> uh, I do. And, and we, we, we uh, really enjoy going to York. It's been a, a tradition for many, many, many people. Uh, so I feel that uh, this October we'll be back. I don't know the strength will be back, how many's coming, but I think it's a long time overdue. Um, and hopefully we get our, our, um, our, our um, lives back together. Trains are just a part of it, and they are very essential to a lot of us, but there's other more important things that we had. And I think we're really serious to the point where we're a little too serious uh, because life's scary out there. I'd rather be in the train world any day than the world we're in because uh, this is uh, my layout. There's no pandemic back there because uh, I don't even have a hospital. I used to have a hospital. I took it out. I said, we don't have sick people in the train world. So uh, I took a hospital out of my layout. I didn't like that. <laughs> I, I have one police car, and it's given a ticket to a guy that was speeding. But the fact is, our train world, our, our, um, our uh, you know, uh, life that we have there is what we live. And that's why many, many guys um, re retreated to their attics and basements during this pandemic and spending on trains really increased. I know in our part, our mail order business did not decrease at all. And uh, the, the in shop did because I closed. I didn't want to have the, we have a small place here and I didn't want to have a lot of people coming in exchanging uh, their uh, viruses with each other. So I've been closed, but we're doing okay. Uh, but I know a lot of my friends, uh, a lot of our friends that, um, Buy, buy the trains and, and come. They're doing good business. They really are. And um, I, I hate to say that the pandemic has helped a lot of people that way, but at least it filled the need. That's what I felt. And uh, that's what we do. And York is going to just be a opening again this fall for, for back. We're back where we were. And I'd like to be back in my corner in New York fairgrounds, talking with people, holding court, and a lot of my BS that I put out, which I love to talk. Oh, my God, I do. And uh, the thing is, uh, uh, my dad says I was vaccinated with a phonograph needle. <laughs> <laughs> I say that joke. It doesn't, only the old people understand what it is. What a phonograph needle. What the hell is that? And, and, but um, that's what we do. And old dad, he, he knew his business. Um Train yeah. So, so Lou, obviously, it's you know a frustrating time, and uh, Lou, because Lou. You, your kids, like I uh, about your all's in the class toy train. Mm -hmm. What's that, Kenny? Mm -hmm. Are you with me? Uh, I hear you, Lou. Yeah, okay. I'm, I'm not sure what happened, but um, that was your dad. Yeah, he yeah, started. Yeah, he, he, he's trying to cut me off again. He's a uh, troublemaker. I can yes. his ass when I see him again. I'll so, show him. But he's so, saying something good about classic toy trains, so I'm inclined to let him talk. Listen, classic <laughs> toy trains is just what it is. It's a classy magazine, the best O-Gage magazine ever written. And it's not because I'm in it, because that helps. But I think the whole thing is uh, <laughs> it, it, it's back O-Gage. I started way back. Uh, when I started collecting, there was only model rail rotor, and uh, that was the comeback. That was it, and uh, that's how I met uh, Peter Bianco and Charles Rowe, and and and, and the, the critters from Madison Hardware, the Shure brothers. Um, I would get the magazine model rail rotors, and and I had a thirst for trains. When I got back into trains, when I, into my thirties. I, I wanted to find anything I could, and Model Railroader was the was the uh, go-to magazine then. But it was filled with a lot of HO, which didn't interest me. But uh, little by little, it changed, and probably 30 years ago, Classic Toy Trains came about, and it was definitely a plug. 
but it, it was headed by Charles and Peter Bianco. I call them the pioneers in mail order sales. They spent millions of dollars, and I mean millions because I know what it costs to advertise, over the years promoting our hobby. They promoted their wallets, but that's all right because they had a good intention. I think the fact is they were both good, honest businessmen, and they gave – and when you called Peter Bianco and you got him on the phone, hi, Lou, how you doing? How's the family? And we'd talk. And – Oh, Kenny was running around in a cutoff sleeve T-shirt, hauling boxes around. Then, <laughs> but then we'd go to York, and that I would meet the guys, and would have dinner at least once with the staff and the guys, and we'd talk trains. And it was surprising the business that these guys had for what they brought to the table, because they weren't businessmen. They were both hairdressers, and the fact is. They, they brought model trains to many, many fellas during that time. Uh, they fed the disease, I said, because the, there was a disease of uh, a need for trains because guys of the baby boomers were needing to get back in the 50s where they had a lot of fun and there was no trains to be bought. There were train shows. Everything was just in its infancy. In the 80s, it just blew out. It blew out. Next. Yep. <laughs> and and Lou, so so obviously we're all discouraged that it's another season that York is, I guess, shut down. And that's kind of why we're doing these virtual events because the train shows are, are not able to open. So do you, th I, I guess they're, they're planning on opening up in the fall and, and yes. you mentioned that if the, uh, I guess fairgrounds, we'll see what happens in summertime, you were mentioning. Definitely. Definitely. They're, we'll know by this summer if the fairgrounds open up to do their summer shows. Okay. And then that'll be a, an indicator. Now, if it's who knows? We, we can't predict the future because we don't know about what they're going to say next about what's, what's happening. I thought you were going to bring your crystal ball. I have it. I have <laughs> it. it lies. My, my crystal ball liar. It's okay. a liar. I, I, I really don't know. I, I We're hoping for the best, and they're planning on – I know the uh, Train Collectors Association, the Eastern Division, is planning on having it. The tables are getting ready, and everything's ready to go. But uh, who knows? It's one of those things that uh, uh, we got to wait and see. Keep posted. I, I don't want to have another one of these shows next October that you're having. I'd rather have the real York show. Yep. This, yeah. this is fun, too. We can have a pre-war, pre-war right. show. There you go. Yeah. Louie, uh -huh. I got a question for you. What? Don't, don't forget the books. <laughs> this is, wait, we have to do a commercial. I was going to say a commercial break here. Right. These are the two books, the best two books you'll ever find right here. Good. And I have them. You just get in touch with me. Look, there's, there's Lou. Yep. There's the... And uh, I got another book I'm working on. It's, uh, I don't know how far I'm going along. I got the title and about 50 stories. And the title is 70 is not so good unless it's your golf score. And, and the fact is it's going to about turning 70, all the different roadblocks and things we've done. And I'm going to mesh in train stories, but mostly it's about our gang. I mean, the baby boomers that are in the trains and they're going to, see what happened during their 70s. And um, I don't know if it's going to be a great book, but uh, it's going to be a good one. I don't know when I'll get a chance to write it, but it's all in here right now. Next. <laughs> I, by the way, we are taking questions. I'm not answering them, but I'm taking them. <laughs> I can. Can I ask Lou some questions? Yeah, go, go. All right. I'm waiting Louis. for you. In, uh, in the Classic Toy Train uh, magazine, this one here, you have an article in there about the um, who's in command. Who in there? Yeah. And you talk about the ZW in there, which is like legendary. It's a great article. Great article. And uh, it's like the ZW Transformer is like the gotta have. Everybody had to have one on their layout, without a doubt. And uh, 
even today, they, even though they change the way things are and how you operate, there still ain't nothing like having that that throttle. You know, I'll tell the, you, you I, feel I, like you are in command. With that. Well, I'll tell you, the ZW I mentioned in the article. I always wanted one when I was young, but I didn't get one because uh, I had a transformer, a little one, little wee, and it ran my train. But I always wanted that big ZW, and it was a dream I had, that and Santa Fe uh, passenger set. This was back mm -hmm. in the early 50s. But I know if you had a ZW transformer, you had everything. The power was there, and it, it, it transferred. Your, the kid behind that became all-powerful. And watching those trains running, and whoever invented the ZW, the style, was a winner. A lot yep. of people call it a football. They mm -hmm. looked like a football, but really having those two handles there, um, then they even come up with the, the KW transformer, which was trying to, to emulate the engineers, uh, two handles as, as the throttles on a diesel engine. They're like handles that upright, and um, they, they, that was a good invention too, but they'll never uh, meet the the, the love and the, the, the feelings of the ZW Transformer. And uh, I did bring that up. But the funny part of that story was it came to me when I was uh, selling. I get a lot of grandparents come in the store, and um, they, they're they buying a train for their grandchild. Well, they aren't buying it. They're buying it for them because yeah. they're going to put it up in their house, and then when the grandkids come and visit, they'll let them play with their train. But in the meantime, old grandpa goes down there and runs the hell out of that train. Um, but he uh, had the kid come over. The kid was about five or six years old, and I showed him on one of the new sets with uh, the steam engine, and it had the uh, remote control, the um, uh, what is it, the handheld which all the new sets are coming with, the Lionel sets. And the granddad, he saw that. He said, what's that? I said, that's a treadmill. Well, I don't want that. I want a real transformer. <laughs> I want that thing there. And I, he said, where's the transformer? And I showed him the plug in the wall plug. Well, he definitely was turned off about that little thing. I said, no, it works fine. It does. Here, let me show it to you. And I had a... Well, right away, the kid pushed Grandpa aside. I like that. And he was playing with that handheld... Uh, doing the whistle, the talking and everything. And even the granddad, he's looking at, he's looking at, he, he, I think he said he liked it too. But the grandson won the argument and he got the set. Meantime, the guy pulled me back. He says, hey, you got one of those real transformers that I can run with this train? I said, yeah, I do. You can run it with that. So I sold him another 1033 line, old line, old transformer. He went out happy too with his little transformer. But the guy, it's a transition. and You're, you're going to see that more and more electronics are taking over this. Uh, I know Hal will agree with me and that the electronics and trains, they passed me by. I really, uh, I missed that train because I can't spend the time getting to know the electronics, but a lot of the guys are, and they're getting real good at it. And I think that, um, uh, uh, that's going to be the future. The, the, the electronics are going to take over. These kids, they're running it on their 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 uh, phones, their uh, iPhones, and that. And um, I think that uh, the I can see the fever of these guys taking on this new electronics. So that's I think that's the the wave of the future is that. Yeah, yeah. But we still like the old ZWs. I'm going down with them. Mm -hmm. And. Lou, I know you got customers like we have uh, that dream of their dream layout. All they do is buy the trains for a future date. They, they put them in storage units. They, they fill up their house and they say, 5, 10, 20 years down the road, I'm going to build this layout. It's like, it's, uh, it's insane. It's insane. Well, there's a, there's a psychological thing about that. Human beings are natural collectors. That's why someone says, where, where, where is this train? Uh, where are they going to go in the future? I said, well, you'll be dead, and your kids might even be dead, but the trains will be here, and there's going to be somebody who wants to collect them because human beings are natural collectors. And this fellow that wants to buy his dream layout, he's living on a dream. 
<laughs> uh, that's what he's doing and and what he does and i've had many 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 fellows do this and even to the point where their wives come in after they died and said he was going to build a big layout there's this room full of trains and i said well he had fun collecting it that yeah, was part yeah. of his dream he lived Very his true. dream and every once in a while back in about 10 years ago when a lot of the baby boomers were starting to retire ten thousand a day retire and i saw an increase of these guys taking the stuff that they collected and they're going to make their and especially even during the pandemic here they're going to make a layout that they always dreamed about now i have time and uh, we're seeing a lot of that happening now um uh, i think i think that the um uh main crux of the train collecting is twofold once it it does make them be happy for the time, but that's the hunt of hunting trains down, not the kill. He wants you got it, and that's why train clubs are good. I know this. I, I akin the train clubs to um, um, groups that go hunting. They have hunting cabins, and guys <laughs> go up there and, and they they bring their guns and they go looking for it. They drag their deer or whatever the hell they're hunting the back to the cabin. Look what I got. Look what I got. I got this. I missed that one. And stories go on and on. But it's the hunt. And yep. I see yep. the same thing in training clubs. I've seen guys coming. I used to call them. They, they, they go in groups and hordes. They come around train shows and see what the other guy bought. And what did you get? And that's the fun of it all. They yep. compare their, their, their bounty. And, and that's why it'll always be here. Trains will always be here. We may not be. We won't. But the trains will be here. Yeah. Lou, I love the guys that walk around with the wanted signs on them. You know, they, they list uh, two or three trains they want. They put a sign on them and they wanted. walk around the hall. On their hat. They put it on their hat, too. <laughs> wanted. Uh, 773 like new for $85. <laughs> and the fact is... I see them all the time. I said, "Good luck. You find two. Give me one." Yeah, it, it's it's. They're like train. The guys in the train world are like um, fifth graders. When you go back, that's the last year of your. When you were really, that's all you had to worry about. When I'm going to have a good time tomorrow, and and the, when I see them coming in a train show, engineers, doctors, uh, laborers. They change into fifth graders, and they come and they got that look in their eye to what they're going to find in the train show. There's nothing like that. And they come yeah. into my train store, they look, and then they go out. A guy was, I went in that that loose store, a man. I come out a little boy, because uh, that's what happens. Uh, the magic of trains, and I and that's what I preach. Uh, I preach the magic <laughs> of toy trains because it's there. It is really there. I've had people stand and see my layout staring i i said you are right buddy i mean <laughs> he's looking at these uh trains go around mesmerized and in his head there's all these dreams of what he wants to be the yeah, mayor yeah. The, the the king of his uh the master of his domain that's what i said yeah, they are yeah. that's yeah. why we love trains yeah. i i you got also the guys that come into the store because i can talk to you because you do retail i do retail we do the shows and some of these guys, they don't want a shopping bag with our name on it. They give me, give me the supermarket oh. bag so the oh. wife doesn't know that I got trains coming in. Shut up! <laughs> I tell you what, I don't have to tell you how many phony bill bills I wrote out. <laughs> <laughs> I took a zero off. I don't even want to say how many. How much that is a thousand? Put a hundred. <laughs> I said, aren't you worried about your insurance? He said, no, I'm worried about my wife. Yeah. <laughs> what's 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 the old joke uh when i die please don't let my wife sell my trains for what <laughs> i paid for them oh there's a lot of, i've i've come a lot of sad stories too that uh, guys have told their wives uh, that they have x amount of money i don't know how much the trains they put a slip after he passed away she comes in i said that's a fiction story what do you have there they you don't have a, those stories are I said he was hoping he would get those. Now he <laughs> said, "You better go talk to him about those prices." <laughs> they were phony lists, but uh, there's always. I always say one thing: what happens in the underground stays in the underground. <laughs> yeah. uh -huh.
good. Uh, very good. Very good. Uh, the, um, you have a question for Hal? Let him say something. I do. I already do. have far. I've been bullshit for half far. Right. Before I before we start, I'd I'd like to say, Bill Tucker, you're welcome uh, for putting the Marks train on the cover. Um, I'm not sure we have ever done that. Uh, mm -hmm. Roger Carp, Roger Carp, kind of looked at me funny when I said I was going to do it, but I said, "Yeah, it's a great little train. It's colorful. It makes people happy. Let's put it on the cover." And I I thought it looked really good. So. Uh, was that a custom painted train or original? Oh, no, that's an old Milwaukee Road steam engine. It's, I I yeah. say that it may not, it may be custom painted, but the the little metal tabs on the locomotive are still folded down, so I don't think it's ever been taken apart. Okay. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Mm. So anyway, yeah. Ask away, yeah. Hal. I got a question for you. Yes, sir. I tell you, in in the uh, magazine they show this like a Lionel display, right? Uh, and we look at this as being back then an amazing layout. You yep. know, it just, it was like the wow factor. And then I, what I like about the articles in here, you have like this uh, photo thing of people's layouts. And I, I tell you, these layouts today blow anything away from the 50s and 60s. It, this stuff is incredible, these layouts. It's just, it just, just beautiful. They're just beautiful stuff. The things that are available today, you know, not only new, but again, we go back to like York, you can pick up all kinds of accessories and everything to, to put on a layout. And yeah, the ones in the stores uh, that Lionel used to build, I, you know, I still find a lot of charm to them. They really were products of their era. Um, and I think they did a good job at what they were supposed to do was sell trains. And mm -hmm. they still... I think a lot of people, you know, they still form a basis of, of a lot of small layouts for sure. Um, in fact, uh, we are going to run a special publication this fall called Toy Trains for Small Spaces. And we're going to have um, some some small layouts, including some old Lionel uh, display layouts. But yeah, um, the stuff that's available now and even if you don't have a big layout, it's still spectacular. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And uh, even like here's another page of these guys uh, layouts they send in. I kind of like that you do this with customers like your customers send in pictures of their layouts and you put it in the magazine because we all get ideas and uh, I get to see what people are buying. And it's just impressive stuff. These these people, are they spend thousands of hours on their layouts i mean it's just it's not a wham bam thank you ma'am this is dedication no and these layouts you're exactly right it's you know thousands of hours and years um frequently and and the least you know we can do in a lot of cases is get a, a picture of it in in our photo section um if not a, a story about the layout and i'm constantly amazed at the level of work that, that goes into these and they're all laborers of love. I mean, yeah. we all enjoy the trains and um, that's our thing. And, and it really shows the, the, the amount of attention and detail that, that people put into it. It's spectacular. Yeah. I yeah. think uh, if you can do an article about what do you do with your broken engine, you know, you, all you got to do is just disconnect it from the uh, the motor from the wheels, and you got a great dummy engine, and it looks like you got five or ten engines pulling one stream of cars. You know, there's, there's, they never looks, go to waste. Even it looks if, like real if you don't numbers. pay to fix it, turn it into a dummy. That's a good idea. I yeah. like that. Can I can I put that on the tips? Uh, <laughs> yep. Call them on the back page there. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. Because some of these engines get expensive to repair, you know, and it don't pay. Just uh, oh, use right. it as a dummy. Well, especially with the electronics and some of this stuff today, um, it's not like you can you can fix it. Uh, it, it. And you're right, it's not cost effective in a lot of cases, unfortunately. So that's, that's actually a really good s solution. I like that. Yeah, it's, uh, I love to watch those uh, train sets that have five or six engines pulling cars and all you need is one engine and a bunch of dummies, and it gives you that same feel. The same right. Feel. Yeah, absolutely. It looks like a real train. Yeah. 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 There's yeah. going to be a run on defective engines now. 
<laughs> <laughs> and Al, you, you guys do a great job of just bringing in all these layouts. And um, we, we actually had one of our customers that showed their, their uh, layouts virtually last uh, show. And, and people just love seeing other people's layouts and it gives them ideas uh, on what to do and how to, how to build it. And you guys really do a great job uh, capturing all different people's layouts. Well, thank you. Uh, you know, we, we try to get all sizes too. And really the, the stories are not nearly as uh, planned out in, in, in terms of us, as you might think. Uh, a lot of these things come in and, and these guys, either, either Roger writes a story, he, get, he gets some photos and he writes a sto uh, story about them, or the, the, the person who has the layout writes the story sometimes. And sometimes it's a big layout, sometimes it's a small layout. Um, but yeah, it, it's, uh, it's amazing the variety uh, of, you know, there's a lot of modern layouts out there right now. There's a lot of post-war, looking layouts out there right now and uh and there's really something for everybody and, and i'm glad you touched on uh ideas because that's really ultimately you know nobody's got the exact same space in their house as as the person say in the magazine but you can take bits and pieces of it and it might uh, you might have uh, a corner or something that you you need something for and you'll see Oh, this is how this guy did it. So you know that I can uh, I can use that idea on my layout, and that's that's really what it's all about is the exchange of ideas. Yeah, and uh, right now you're getting a bunch of good um, suggestions. So uh, I I believe uh, uh, either yourself or maybe some of your teammate uh, team members could hop on later on and check some of these comments because. A lot of people want to see certain things, and it may be good to put them in the article later on. So I'm sure Hal and uh, the uh, Classic Toy Train team slash Columbac will uh, review this later on. So keep them coming and keep all the great feedback, guys. You bet. We, we always need good story ideas. Uh, I, I've seen a couple people mention Williams, and uh, really, um, I'd like to see some people write some articles about Williams uh, products right now i don't know that we have we have anything that's the thing you know lionel stories we have tons and tons of um and post-war stuff obviously we have tons and tons of, of but marks we can always use more stories um i don't know if it's heresy at a york event but uh, american flyer uh stories are always helpful william stories um so so if you're out there and you feel like uh, writing something, please, you know, send us a, a, a query say, asking, you know, here's my idea. Maybe here's a photo or two to look at. And, uh, and do, would you be interested in this story? And uh, eight times out of 10, we'll probably tell you, yeah, go ahead with it. That's great. Yeah. Kenny, I'd like to jump in a little bit uh, pr promoting uh, my buddy Hal's uh, magazine. And um, I'd like to make a mention of the greatest writer of Toy Train magazine articles besides me, <laughs> Roger Carp. Roger Carp does all of the work. He's a good writer. He understands. And he's a newcomer to the field. He's probably 30, 40 years in it. But the thing <laughs> is, um, I, I, I want to say that the magazine is the best. It tries to uh, meet people's needs. And I think that you can't go wrong. If you just sit down, everybody looks forward once a month when it comes out, the months they do, and to sit down and enjoy it. And I think reading about the magazine, and let me make one mention about the, the size of the train layouts. I'll tell you the truth. Back in the 50s, nobody had what you see in the magazines today. In fact, our houses back in the 50s didn't have room for a train layout. A lot of guys just had a little layout to fit underneath their bed on wheels, and they would pull it out and run the trains on them and would put soldiers on and that. It wasn't as, it was not there anywhere near what we have today as far as the types of layouts and what they could put on with using all the new uh, um, product that comes out. So we're, we're living a new life. A lot of the guys that had train layouts in the past, if you had a four by eight sheet in your house 
and the 50s, it had to come down after Christmas because there was no room to have that big thing laying in. All we had was big houses with small bedrooms. I don't know where small rooms were inside all of our houses. So nobody had the sprawling ranch style houses and second stories and things that you have today. So I am glad that uh, we have been able to live out some of our dreams. And Classic Toy Trains Magazine does it. I'm telling you, it, it's a good read. It's nice. To, if you aren't subscribing to it now, do it because it's fun to read. And, and they got some good deals, too, as far as um, – see, I'm doing a commercial for you. Hell. I've got a couple of good deals after you get done talking. If you Well, you, you may not get the microphone back. Yeah. <laughs> Once I grab it, forget about it. No, you go ahead on. I just want to say about those things about layouts, and they're they're trying. They're always looking for a way to try to meet. And I noticed one other last thing. My buddy from uh, Brazil, Sao Paulo, Brazil, Ricardo Sasso. I see he checked in. He's reading this, and uh, he's watching this, I mean. And they are great friends, true train collectors. They travel 6,000 miles to come to York once a year. And the boys, and they come loaded for bear too. They, they, they get a couple of five. And they, they visited my store. There was five of them, four or five of them, all nice gentlemen. And I see them, and I miss them. And I want to tell them, Ricardo, I miss you. I want you to come back. You don't have to take your wallet. Just <laughs> I, I want to make a mention because you, you talk about train collectors. They have their own club in Brazil and they meet periodically and uh, they enjoy trains just like we do, if not more. And uh, they don't got, they, they don't have the availability of trains locally. They don't have the train stores at all. And, and they are going through a tough time with the, the, the pandemic there too. But I'm glad to see you checked in on this meeting, and, and I want to tell all the boys I said hello to them. Kenny, Kenny you know them, don't you? Yep, yep. They've, yeah, they've, they've been you. Uh, I love what? these out of towners, though. The guy, the cut, the guys from another country. They have such a love for trains. They really do. Yeah, they're it's, in another uh, country. I mean, they're not out of towners. They're out of countryers. But they're, <laughs> they're good people. Okay, Al, you can talk again. <laughs> All right. Well, if you like, if you like lose writing, and and who does not, um, you're going to love this SIP that that we put out last fall called Families and Electric Trains, and this is what we'd be talking about in the booth at York. Um, Families and Electric Trains has got uh, train layouts to start with, and it's also a lot of stories about a lot of families and the role that toy trains have played in their life. Uh, o gauge trains, S gauge trains. Um, stores that that you've known uh, over the years. Um, there's a lot of a lot of great material in here. Uh, four generations of train lovers. I mean, who does not love stuff like that? Mm -hmm. And price on this is oh, I wrote that down. It's eleven dollars and twenty cents for the print copy, or you can get print and digital for sixteen dollars. Now, the other thing I have, speaking of the magazine, is a DVD archive collection of the last five years. And that can go with your 25-year collection of classic toy trains. The price on this is $29.95. And the sweet thing about this is it also includes, I believe, six uh, special publications in addition to, to five years of classic toy trains, the last five years. Um, so you get a lot of value with this. Um, it's really useful, uh, easy to search, and, and I think you're going to enjoy it a lot. Now, to even sweeten the deal a little more, uh, if you order within the next, I think it's probably the next week, and you use the code WGH2021, you're going to get $10 off your order of $25 or more. So... Get to KalmbachHobbyStore.com right now. That's KalmbachHobbyStore.com for all your toy train needs. That sounds like an promotion to me. There you go. <laughs> there's there's the standing sex tourism part. That's not all. <laughs> and that's not all. Standing by. <laughs> and how? On the, um, the digital magazines, right? 
the um, you get more content with that also than the regular magazine. The digital gives you more. Um, as it stands now, not exactly. Um, the digital version, you. What's good about the digital versions is the links to websites and uh, things for advertising purposes and within the stories, they, they work. So, yeah, I would say, yes, you get more content with the digital versions. It's, it's to me, it's a slightly more useful. Um, and with people with tablets and phones and everything these days, particularly tablets, um, I don't necessarily like to read a magazine on my phone, but on a tablet that's a little bit bigger, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm pretty happy with that. So in some ways it's, it's, it's easier. Now I can see a day when we are going to have things like pictures that turn into videos, um, you know, within digital editions. And it's, that's going to be probably within the next 10 years, I would say, uh, maybe even sooner than that. Uh, it takes a lot of bandwidth to do that, but things like that. So, yeah, I, I would say, um, it's, you know, digital is, is if we're going to gain any more audience, um, I think all of us need to, to embrace the digital world. We, the, pr the print's not going anywhere. Um, we love it. I know you guys love it. And, and most of our customers uh, enjoy it a lot. And, and it's, it's not going to go anywhere anytime soon. Um, but digital, you know, publishing is is on the rise and uh, i think it's just going to get bigger yeah yeah i i went on for the first time a couple of weeks ago it was interesting um it was new to me to do the digital thing um some things i couldn't read but then i figured out how to make the page bigger so that i can read the uh content so it was um a learning experience but uh it was interesting i still like the physical magazine the um, I like taking it with me on an airplane or going in the backyard with it, that kind of a thing. Um, Absolutely. And, and, uh, and, and a lot of our customers do, too. And I do, too. I, I'm, I'm a paper uh, paper magazine person. I, I just like that. Um, but you've got a generation that is not, you know, does not buy magazines and does not buy newspapers, certainly. And that's right. And those are the people, you know, we're, we're out there trying to reach. And the other mm -hmm thing is for you know all the people who say well i've collected every copy of ctt that's ever been printed um i the first thing i ask is um are you married and where do you keep them you know uh it, it's a lot it's a lot of stuff to keep around and and some people keep you know the last five years and then before that they they get rid of um but yeah if the one thing, uh, and, and we kind of talked uh, earlier about trains.com, um, all those sites have archives. So now, you know, the subscription, you get you get access to all of those. And that's really pretty fantastic. Mm -hmm. Saves a lot of room. Kenny. Yeah. I'll tell you, tell you one thing good about the magazine you can share with. Every time I go to the doctor, and you get my age, you go to doctors. It's all you do is go to doctors, and your wife goes to the doctor. You got to sit in these waiting rooms. Well, the magazine comes to me every time. Yep. Sir. I bring them, and I don't ever know about anybody. I love that. That's my favorite time to to, watch, to read the magazine in the doctor's office. <laughs> so I think because they make you wait out there, and I think it's good to have a carry on. Like Hal said, uh, the printed material is not going anywhere. I mean, who's going to haul a computer around with you in the start? Uh, you got to have the magazine for reference, and, and it's a lot of fun. And, and today's day and age, it's cheap because the entertainment's expensive, and this is the cheapest form of entertainment I've ever seen, some of the deals they got. So I think that having a magazine is good uh, to read and to reference, and uh, it, it's going to be around a while. Yep. Uh, Kenny, you asked about where do we think that the train – York is going to go. Yeah. Early about that. And uh, I think it's a good question. I get that. I The two of the biggest, one of the biggest questions I get, which I don't like, is when should I sell my trains? <laughs> I get so mad when I hear that people come in. What do you mean? Why are you here? Why are you even here and asking me something <laughs> like that? Spreading that. You bought it to enjoy and have. Don't go to sleep at night worrying where when, when you're going to sell your trains. 
enjoy them, you collect them, you have them. And when you die, let them take care of them, whoever's there left. But the fact is, don't worry about selling your trains because I think that the trains are meant to be owned. And I think that the uh, York show used to have 15,000, maybe more, depending on who was counting, come to the show twice a year. And they spent money. And they, were, they went from two or three halls to about eight halls now. And, of course, the Great Orange Hall, which I am in charge of. And uh, that's the best hall going. And uh, they're all good. But uh, the Orange Hall was the most modern. And we used to get people that would come in there. They would be bumper to bumper in the aisles, pushing and shoving, waiting to open up. Those days are never going to come back because sheer numbers. Number one, we got more dealers, more people to sell. Number two, there's less buyers. The, the buying public is dwindling a little bit. It's not going to go away, but it will never be in as high numbers that the baby boomers ha had. But it will always be a York. There will always be a train show somewhere to go to share these wonderful items that we have categorized, classified. They're all something that it's, it's a known collectible item. And it's always going to be here. Even, even when we're dead and gone, someone's going to be collecting trains. And I think that that, I wrote an article once called, uh, Where Have All the Lionels Gone? And that tells you the story. What I think happened is based on the old song, Where Have All the Flowers Gone? And it starts with the uh, flowers, the girls, the soldiers, the wars, the death, back to the funeral, and, and the flowers come up again. And I think that the trains will be dug out again. If you ever get a chance to read that article, where have all the lionels gone? You'll get a picture of what, the way I first saw this train hobby 15 years ago. And it's going to happen. And it's a fun ride for anybody that's on it. I, it. I encourage you to join the crowd because you're missing. If you if you have the even a little bit of a thought, you should have a train going around your Christmas tree Buy it, enjoy it, because it'll put you to sleep. And you'll get memories that you never thought you had, and it'll go. And it'll grow from there. So I think that uh, that that's uh, York will always be here, Kenny. And ask your question. Uh, a lot of people won't be there. I <laughs> I had a dream not too long ago. That York reopened, and I went in there. And there were all placards behind the, the uh, doggone train shows, the, the, the tables, all the guys there. They were like the ball, the ball games, people <laughs> placards, and train dealer placards all over the hall. <laughs> what the hell is this? It was like a nightmare. I was like so glad when I out. That's a true story. I, uh -huh. I, have, I have very vivid dreams, and uh, <laughs> they were placards. And, Wake and, up, Lou. This is a dream. Wake up, Lou. Uh, <laughs> uh, Luke, I kind of disagree with you on one aspect. Uh, uh, don't sell your train. Yeah. I think you can have as much as much fun selling your trains as you did buying the trains. It's just it's still a camaraderie. It's meeting people. It's seeing people. And if you're selling something that's older, upgrade it with something newer this way you don't feel like you're shelling out more money for it you just get rid of some stuff you're not using and then buy some of the new stuff yeah. just kind of okay. just kind of work it that way rotate it rotate it that's it let me tell you something junior let me tell you about that i wrote an article about that it was called seller's remorse <laughs> and and what it is and this is true i've seen guys that bought they bought and sold their collection 10 times. They always went back and bought it again. The fun of selling. I know what you're saying. Yeah. And what happens is these guys used to run around in groups. One or two would quit. And he sold this one fella, sold his collection. I saw him walking in the show. He looked like a lost soul. <laughs> around. I says, how you doing? I don't want to say his name because they don't know who it is. And the fact that he said, uh, ah, I sold my trains. The worst thing I ever did. I had the money. I blew it on something. I don't got the money or the trains. But yeah. the, the fact is, seller's remorse. So you're right. The, he had a heck of a time selling his trains. But me, if when it, my own personal collection, I can't sell. It's something I love. I have it in my house. Once it makes it to my house, no one gets it. 
But the fact is I sold thousands of other trains, and a lot of them I wish I'd have kept. I never sold a train that, that, that I was sorry I sold. I was mm -hmm. I, A lot of them I'm sorry I sold. But the fact is that's when, when you get – you do have fun selling it, but after the selling what? Mm -hmm. Then what? Upgrade. Upgrade to the new trains. Well, then you're back buying. That's fine. You're back yep. in the you're back in the game. That's yep. what they say. And and that's all the that's part of the game. Buying and selling, your own collecting, improving, getting something better you had before. Yes, I agree with you there. Yep. But I think that some people that want to just sell and get out of it, I said, You aren't dead yet. Why are you selling it? Yeah. <laughs> Stay here and keep what well, you have and enjoy it. Yeah. Well, yeah, Lou, I pulled out a, um, a magazine from about 20 years ago. And I was looking at the Southern Pacific Daylight in there. Oh. And it was going for, at that time, it was going for $975. And uh, back then, it was a collector market and, and more than an operator market. It started with 400 <laughs> But now, the, the new Daylight Engines... I mean, for what you get, what they do today, they're spectacular. It's yeah. like the real deal. The three smoke generators going, the sound system, the lights. It's, it's like a wow factor that's unbelievable. So it's, some people say, well, trains are expensive. They're really not that expensive compared to what you used to get and from 20 years ago. You got to pull out the old magazines. You'll have sticker yeah. shock back then. Sure. Yeah, I, I think you're 100% correct there. I think that the technology has gotten to the place where you're getting way more for your money than you did then. Yep. That's, yep. that's the thing. And uh, I think that uh, the market shows that now in the used market. You're seeing some of that stuff gone way down in price. Mm -hmm. uh, that Southern Pacific Daylight, which you mentioned, I, yep. I, uh, I said it was the day the music died when they put that out. <laughs> and I'll tell you why. When it first come out, it was about the first GS2 or 4, whatever the first one come, with the dual headlights. Um, it, it sold for 400 and it was back in about 82 or 83. I can't remember the date. But it went like crazy. And the Southern Pacific went nuts. And yeah. I think that uh, the price tripled. At one time, The uh, even the B unit for that uh, passenger yeah. went for like $2,000. Now you could pick them up for a hundred and a half or a hundred. Now, <laughs> the thing is, it was supply and demand. And I think that uh, when when uh, Eugene Kuhn, I don't know if it was Eugene, it was Gene Kuhn. What was his first name? Richard. Richard Kuhn. Kuhn. I call him Eugene. I don't know why. It's an Alzheimer's sitting in. And the thing is, I uh, Richard Kuhn, when everybody bought those Southern Pacific engines and they they tripled in price, he uh, got pressured by friends, somebody, whoever, to put out an, an, another engine looks like it, had a single headlight instead of two. It was a GS2. And it made that engine just drop. And all of the greedy people that had these engines stored away, that bought, thought they were going to make a mint, got really mad. And, and I said, the, the, the collector version of some of that Lionel stuff really took a hit because all it took is says, I'm paying all this money for a collector item. And they'll, they'll make another one next year. Looks just like it. Lionel didn't care. They, they, they made their money on their train. And I agreed with that because I think that people should, these aren't collector items. You know, you're not looking to pay your house off right. with a, with a hundred dollar investment. I think that they're made to have fun with and enjoy them. And, and you'll, you'll see you're be better off than you tied into that, that market that we had in the eighties. It was a brutal deal back yeah. then. Mm -hmm. Remember them days. Yes. Yeah. And, and today they're making the trains are just unbelievable, but they're not making enough of them. It's all like built to order. So you got to get your pre-orders in to Lionel, to us, Otherwise, uh, they're not mass producing anything. Just, well, do you, know. you think that they'll be able to get one next year? Uh, the second run, they missed one this year. Is there going to be one coming out like it next year? Hopefully, mm -hmm. that'll be the case. Mm -hmm. But you're yeah. right. It's limited production. And I, and I agree with that. I think that uh, uh, they should be a limited production. People get in there and buy it, and they'll wait for another one next year if mm -hmm. they miss this one. Yeah, I yeah. believe in the gouge prices. The, that's not fair. I never did like that. Yeah.
He, um, uh, Hal, yes, the, sir. Um, with the uh, classic toy trains, don't you have a uh, subscription deals for the classic toy trains? Uh, I always get emails for you from that stuff. Mm. We do. Um, actually, the see, the thing is, is now that we haven't had any shows for a couple of years, the best deals for classic toy trains used to always be at the shows because I think you could sign up for a year for twenty nine ninety five. Mm-hmm. And um, and I know we have some deal going on right now. I'm not really sure what it is, unfortunately. Yeah. I'm sorry to Can say. Can they see it on your website? Is it there yeah. or do you got to sign I, up if, for emails? If you go to kombachhobbystore.com, mm-hmm. um, uh, you can you can find find the deals. Now, you also get them in your email. And if you're part of the newsletter, uh, subscribe yeah. to our newsletter. You'll always get a better deal uh, if you're a newsletter subscriber or uh, trains.com if you're if you're a subscriber to that. So um, you're definitely going to get your best value if you're if we have your email address. How about that? If we can get a hold, <laughs> of you, you're going to get you're going to get a better deal. Um, and, and 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 yeah. So uh, call us. We'll 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 fix you up. Yeah. And okay. the, um, I'm ready. To will- I'm ready to do my advertisement. Oh, God. Another one? <laughs> now, those of you interested, you get this book or this book. I never met a train I didn't like. And back in the day, autograph copy from Lou. Just send send uh, $12.95, uh, two for a quarter, two for 25 And if you send me $35, I'll throw in a video too that's a trifecta <laughs> you get wow. the trifecta just contact me somehow by the phone or by email and and we'll get your book out signed to whoever wants it because these are definitely collector value they made the top 10. Yeah, I, don't know, I, I don't know what top 10 but they made a top 10 somewhere lou are you gonna write a personal message for each one or are you just gonna sign it no don't get crazy <laughs> I, I, i'm gonna write Best wishes, Luke Palumbo. Keep searching. That's it. You don't get anything more. Any more than that, you got to pay extra. Well, that, you, you sold one to Martin, Lou. There you go. <laughs> I'm telling you what, we sold thousands of them. They're, they're, they've been a good seller, and I definitely, um, I'm going to um, write the other book. I'm telling you, it's going to be. It's going to be. It'll make you pee your pants. It's a funny. <laughs> I'm telling you, Lou. I, I think we got to start charging uh, royalty for the the books you sell online. Yeah, you've been charging. <laughs> I'll pay you twice what I gave you last year. <laughs> I'm gonna double it up. There you Your go. boys are good. You're my boys. I'll tell you what. I don't care. You, if you never want a horse, you still well, have. To pay. I I'd say you you could take us out to Coombs at at York next trip, but I I think they uh, closed down. They're probably everything's torn down. You get you they <laughs> throw that restaurant down the the, the uh, roast beef. Carlos, uh, cool. Oh, prime rib, yeah. What did prime, prime rib? rib? Oh yeah. yeah. That's oh, yeah. all right. Don't worry. I'll pay you back. All right. <laughs> bring you a can of can, a candy bars. I'll bring you. You know, you guys have been asking all the questions, but but let's. I I, I would ask you the the. You know the shows have gone uh, have been canceled because of the pandemic. But how has business, you know, and how has the hobby evolved uh, for you guys uh, because of it? Well, the it has been an uphill climb, big time. The uh, we didn't know if we were going to go out of business or what last March. It was like, what the hell is going to happen in our industry? It's not a necessity at all. But it it was amazing how the amount of new customers we are getting every day, it's, it's, we're not just talking five or 10, we're talking hundreds every week, hundreds. I think this industry has got a, a big second wind and it's going to grow like crazy if we can keep them interested. And um, I mean, during the summertime, I think we're going to, you know, slow down just like everybody always did in the, the off season of trains. But if, if they decide to stay in it next Christmas, it's going to be a huge, huge Christmas. We're all going to do fantastic. 
And um, uh, Hal, I think your readership must be way up with people subscribing too, quite honestly. It, it has done done pretty well this year. Um, I wouldn't say way up, but certainly, you know, uh, as you know, the, the, the demographics of our, our hobby are not uh, getting much younger, but our, our, our subscriptions have stabilized and that's, and maybe even grown just a tick. So I think that's a total win. Yeah, um, yeah. Not only that, but the paper subscriptions. But I think we'll also we're also seeing it in the digital side. So yeah, I I, I think it's been good. And our uh, our our special publications and our PDFs, yes, those have been have been fantastic over the last year. Yeah, and yeah. I'll I'll just chime in there. Um, first, I, I want to thank all the customers during the March timeframe where we actually had a shutdown that actually still supported us and understood that we may not even ship an order to them in you know a week, two weeks, a month, two months, and they still place their order with us. And it, it, we, we really appreciate it because they had so much faith and trust and there's there's so many good people in this hobby. I, I mean, there, there was a story, a, a guy called up and he just wanted to donate us, to us to, to keep us in business because nobody knew what was going on during the pandemic. And, and it's just amazing. Our uh, community of people in the, uh, the, the train industry is, is just amazing. And it, it's really so great to see people, um, I, I guess, come together during a, uh, a difficult time. So um, I, I think it's because of that, this industry will continue forever. I think we help people uh, get through this COVID, quite honestly. We all uh, pooled together and we got up and running selling product and products so that the, got, the people could stay busy building their layouts. They had something to do and we supplied them with the materials. And uh, I think uh, it made it a little easier for people to get through this, for sure. Well, this ahead, show we'll jump in. This this <laughs> show is a lot better than watching CNN, MSMAP, and all that other <laughs> BS. Because I will tell you what, I'm sick of it all. Yeah. I love trains, and I think that uh, we're going to be there. I'm going to see you in York, all of you folks. And I want to thank Kenny, Kenny, and Hal for let me take over the show. Because I think that uh, that's just what I do. <laughs> the thing is, but the fact is, I only want to show my love for the hobby and what I like to do and what it's brought to me. It's done a lot for me, and I've met a lot, of, a lot of good people, good yeah. people. And I think that's the common denominator what we have in this hobby. Yeah. We have a hobby with a lot of good people. Guys yeah. come in there and women both, and, and then just share a sharing of a hobby. And I want to thank everybody, and I'll hope we'll be around a lot more years. Yeah. Yep. Mm. Um, yeah. Also, uh, guys, uh, customers out there, uh, go visit a train club. See what they got going on. They got great layouts, and uh, a lot of them you can bring your engines there and run them. Uh, it's a uh, it's a, it's a, it's not a replacement for train shows, but they're just as good. They train these train clubs uh, are dedicated. They have a uh, big space, and um, they uh, they talk trains, and it's that's all they do is talk trains. So it's great, great things for those clubs, and they make a lot of custom stuff. Like we're entertaining a lot of custom stuff now. We're having um, uh, different manufacturers make us custom trains for our regional type stuff or some. A uh, hot type of uh, um, road names or something like that. So just uh, keep an eye out for some new custom stuff that we're making or the local clubs that uh, also make stuff. Uh, sign up for trainworld.com on our emails, and we're always sending out these uh, special sales, which my son mentioned we got a sale going on right now for the York. Um, so if you get our emails, there'll be a special code word in there. They'll use that, and it's for O-Gage product. It's going to be for, uh, I guess, to the end of the week on that stuff. And um, uh, let me see. And, and because there's such a short supply on some stuff, and it's not really that it's a short supply. It's just so many people have jumped into the hobby, so the stuff is drying up quicker. 
now we're having to buy from the distributors that we normally buy direct from the manufacturers. And when we buy from distributors, we have to pay a little more for stuff. So just try to grab what you can because it's disappearing fast. All these, um, the new stuff, the stuff that's been in our warehouse a couple of years, it's all disappearing. There's just not enough product to go around right now. So make sure you pre-order with the uh, new Lionel catalog because a lot of that stuff is built to order. And Lionel already set their numbers. We do have some extras to sell. So take a look at trainworld.com and see what the uh, new items are. And we'll be more than happy to take a back order from you with no deposit down. Mm. Yeah. And, right. and uh, that I, I know you actually uh, wrote down on your notes that um, you did want to say something about Charles Rowe Sr. So I, I'll let yeah. you speak to that because you, you made a note on it. And I know uh, it was brought up before. Well, we, we lost another titan in the industry for sure. Uh, right before the holidays, uh, Charles Rowe Sr. with um, Charles Rowe Supply Company. Uh, this man is a legend. An absolute legend. And anytime I spoke to Charlie uh, Sr., I learned something. He he just kind of, he's one of those guys that, you know, when you, he says something, you listen. Because he was always serious talking about the industry, what's happening, the manufacturers, the future. Um, I, I, I lost a good friend. He, uh, I, I will dearly miss uh, Charlie. For sure. And um, I haven't spoken to Chucky at all, his son. And uh, hopefully at the next York show, we'll we'll hook up and we'll uh, talk some there. But um, uh, there was a uh, write up in uh, Classic Toy Trains about Charlie. And it's uh, um, quite honestly, I should have been bigger. The guy deserved a two page spread, quite honestly. He, yeah. um, he, he, he's one of these guys that created this industry. Yeah, him and my father Peter. The uh, those two guys, even though they were fierce competitors, they were good friends, and um, and that's what this hobby is about. It's it's all about uh, working together, being together, um, and uh, just kind of wheeling and dealing with everyone. Yep. So it's a uh, 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 I miss Charlie. I'm gonna miss him dearly. Kenny, I'd yeah. like to just jump in and tell on this because you hit uh, a spot that I'm, I wrote about, and it's going to be in the future, uh, maybe another month or so, called the Pioneers. And I, and I took what both went after Charlie died. Uh, I, I, I thought about it, and in my own 525 words, 550 words, I try to give honor to both of Pete Bianco and Charlie Rowe because both were pioneers and hobbies. And I want to just say that both were gentlemen, like I said before, good businessmen, and, and uh, they they brought to the hobby what well, they brought to business what a lot of other people should have in their businesses today. Because uh, you got people there that don't give you the respect that you're a buyer, you're a seller. My dad always used to say, "You never get mad at money," because mm -hmm. when you're in business, you have to do this do the business the way it is. And I think that. Uh, Besides the pioneers, there was the sons of the pioneers, mm -hmm. and that's Kenny and Chucky, the ones I knew, and they took the business by the horn, both of them, and you're going to see both of them. I wrote about them, and I think that uh, they, they have good, big shoes to fill, but a lot of preparation they have. They were born and weaned on buying and selling this trains for this hobby, and they're going to continue. And it's good for the hobby that both of those companies are still in business. And I allowed them, both of them. Yeah, yeah, and and it's incredible, Luke, because when for me, I remember going to York since I was ah, uh, it's got to be since third grade, and I I really haven't missed a York since third grade, and uh. Not not even uh, Charles Rowe Sr., but also uh, uh, Joe Grzybowski Sr. They, there's just so many great people in this train industry that that uh, have passed away uh, that that have taught me personally 
just life lessons throughout. And I remember Charles Rowe Sr. would always pull me aside and tell me uh, what I, sh I, I should do, shouldn't do. And it, it, it's great to have those mentors and not even, you know, with my, my grandfather, but these are competitors giving me advice when I was a young kid. And, and it's truly something uh, amazing and uh, ju just really embraced. And I personally think that's because York brought all of us together. And, and Lou, just even with you, you know, uh, going back uh, for, with my grandfather, you know, the, the things you have taught me throughout. So, so it's really nice to kind of grow up. And I've, I've seen, you know, the, the generations change and shift and, uh, you know, everybody seems to, to be there for one, one another. That's true. Very true. And uh, we're lucky to have them all. Yeah. 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 Well, on, a, on a, another note, with MTH uh, closing their doors uh, pretty soon, uh, at least their old place, um, everybody's been waiting for closeouts. Well, guess what? <laughs> There's no closeouts. They <laughs> sold crazy. just about everything. People grabbed it. There is. You better start getting on that computer and start ordering because there's not going to be anything left. There's, uh, it's uh, shocked the hell out of me. It really did. I'm, I'm starting to see uh, some of the stuff that, you know, the one-offs and the test shots and this and that show up on eBay already. So, um, so it's, 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 it's out there. And yeah, I think they, uh, as they, as they say on TV, selling everything to the bare walls. They are. Everything they are. Let's go. Uh, cabin, cabin auctioneers, log cabin auctioneers handling. I talked to Mike the other day. And he said he's busy just cleaning it all out. They're selling everything they had, the shop, the, everything. I left a, a book there. I said, did you sell my book, Mike? Maybe you can get some <laughs> good money for it. The fact is, he and I are getting together to write his second 20 years. We are both going to write this. He asked me if I'd do it for him. His first 20 years ended in 2000, and the second 20 years ended in 2020. And uh, I was, we were going to put, we were getting ready to put it on paper and write his second book. When he called me up, he says, I sold the company. This was last March. Right, right before the pandemic, he sold the company. He sold the building is what he sold, the building. Right. right. And, and then the company went afterward. But the fact is, I called him the other day. Uh, well, he, yeah, we talked. And I said, the, "Is the book on or off?" He said, "No, it's on." When do I get rid of all this stuff? And we'll, 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 we'll write, it's an extra chapter we can put in. And uh, he said, we'll sell, <laughs> "We'll sell the shit out of that book." That's what he told me. <laughs> so, I, uh, so that's looking to come maybe next year. But we'll have that on the board too. But MTH did leave a, a large, another large footprint large and you're right kenny they were talking about uh, no one's gonna want them they're out of business blah 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 it's the opposite effect everybody yeah. wants something somebody else doesn't have that's right. the idea of collecting i want to have the only one or at least one of the only one and that's why people collect they want something somebody else to them this mth did make a good product his yeah, product yeah. he was ahead of his time and uh, he made lionel better company he yes. made a better company for when he stepped in, everybody stepped their game up and that's what happened. But uh, now we're worried about, which they'll talk about Thursday, the service of these things. Guys are asking me, we, we're going to get these things serviced. I said, listen, it's out there. It's a product. Somebody will figure out how to make the parts for it to replace it. it yeah. It's too big of a market for just to go away by itself. It's not going to go away. So yeah. there'll be parts for your MTH engine. And I do know that there's another company that's going to be making some of They bought their dies. It was Atlas bought their dies. So it's still going to come on. It's still going to be there. But you're right. Right now, there's a desperation move for good MTH stuff. It's out there. Yeah. yeah. I, I think with uh, with uh, Mike Wolk selling some of his dies, he's going to be licensing out his own um, system, the Proto 3, um, this DCS yeah. stuff. So I think even though MTH may not be making it down the road, I think whoever picks up their engines may license out his uh, Proto 3 DCS and you'll still have it out there. I think Somebody made be... it, they'll make it again. That's yep. all. 
But yep. the basic product out there, the steam engines, the diesels, all the product, everything they made, it's there. It's just what's inside um, uh, inside of the um, uh, engine that they have to make. And, and uh, somebody asked, what may, why, why did the MTH make Lionel a better company? Well, I'll tell you what, if you lived back in the 70s, you'd have seen the junk that Lionel was putting out. Uh, we bought it because there was nothing else there. The yep. NPC trains, the cheesy little things. And then little by little, it started improving. But when Mike Wolf started putting trains out, when he started, they had to step up because he did research on his sound systems and things like that. The Lionel up their game immensely and made everybody happy. That's yep. all. The competition. It, 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 that's what it is. It breeds the excellence in my yeah. eye. Hmm. And, um, I agree. I was, I was happy to see that, uh, well, the things that have gotten picked up from, from scaletrains.com, the S gauge stuff and the, uh, the stuff that Atlas picked up, um, there's still a chunk of rail King stuff out there. Somebody's looking to make trains. It sounds like mm -hmm. so. Um, and those are some of my favorite trains. So, um, so, uh, unfortunately, my wallet does not allow me to to make that kind of a purchase. But, um, but yeah, I, I'm I'm happy to see, and and I'm glad. You know, the tooling to me, the tooling is is really what um, what has value. The electronics the electronics can be made, and the, that that's uh, you know whatever control system you like that that can be made. But the tooling is the stuff that really has to be saved. You've got to have that shell and the frames and everything uh, to put around that stuff. And, and that's, that's all still there. So that's fantastic. And I'm sure you guys will hear a lot more about that on Thursday night. Yeah. Tune in people. Yeah. <laughs> I will. I'm, I'm curious. I want to hear. <laughs> well, well, I kind of you... think you're with MTH's uh, system, their electronics, it is, Definitely number two in the industry, without a doubt. It's um, I think anybody that uh, I guess um, purchases a uh, a license from Mike and puts it in their engines, it's a home run. It's because people are comfortable with it, they're used to it, they have it already. It's it's a no brainer to keep buying that system. I think their system. I, I don't think anybody can knock out their system. You know, you got Lionels and you got Mikes, and it's going to be around for a very long time. Yeah, why why reinvent the wheel either? Right. Well, yeah. yeah. This is going to make it a little cheaper. There, it's pretty expensive. Some of the, they got to make an inexpensive board to replace some of those things because mm -hmm. guys aren't willing to put in three hundred dollars to replace an engine that they paid five hundred for or four hundred. So they got to, and they'll be in competition will force the cost of those things down. You'll see things available a lot less expensive that still do the job. Because you know what? They're they're good at copying each other. That's what they yeah. do. Then they arrest each other and they sue each other and then everybody else has the stuff. But the thing is that, that they'll have to lower the price on some of these electronics. Yeah, the electronics though these days are, are the now thing and it's the problem i mean it's and it's not only in trains look at washers and dryers i know people who have bought thousand dollar washers and dryers and the board on those things goes yeah. out in six months and it costs four hundred dollars to replace the board that's you true kidding me? That's so, cool. yeah it, it's uh the electronics yeah i know they can knock them off but we've 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 seen some cases where they've done that and those trains, they're 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 done in a year or two, you know. They're and 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 like uh, like your dad said, uh, you might as well pull the pull the wires off and use them as dummy engines, you know. Yeah, and and I think right now is a time where everybody's interested, focused, and everybody wants to know what's the the gonna happen. It, uh, is MTH going to be sold out completely? Is Mike really uh, uh, retiring? I mean, there's so many questions around MTH and what's going on. And, you know, at the same time, people are just gobbling up their product and they, they want to make sure that, that they have it if they can't get it in the future. And uh, uh, it, it's going to be interesting to see what happens. Um, but, uh, you know, it, it's a great company, and uh, Mike did very good with uh, the legacy that he has built, for sure. Yeah. I, in fact, I was uh, 
writing my July editorial today, and we were, the news story is in there about Atlas buying the tooling. And we talked about, you know, MTH closed in May. By the time this comes out, it's going to be May. And I wasn't sure what to write there. No. I, I don't I don't know. You know, I, I'm pretty sure Mike was uh, serious about closing in May, but you never know. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, I, I said he he said he would close in May 20, 2021, sort of hedged that. So, yeah. Yeah, well, I I know they uh, they they definitely sold their building, so it's uh, going to be interesting to see what happens. And um, I I guess we'll all cross our fingers for just more product to come because uh, you know it both having both MTH and Lionel was great for a dealer and for the consumer, and you could really just have anything you wanted. Yeah, tune definitely. in Thursday for Rich and Andy show. Yeah, yeah. Well, maybe they'll and they'll come to grips with some of these things. I know that they had some people inside going to do the electronics and the parts. Uh, Ryan supposed to take over the parts, and so there'll be people following up on a lot of their stuff. Right, right, right. Yeah. All right, you're gonna wrap this up. I gotta go home. Yeah. <laughs> oh, now. All right. I, well, I was waiting for my father. He, he disappeared. There he for a is. Second. Yeah, probably go to yeah, the bathroom. Yeah, I'm back. All right, let's go. Uh, I had a friend over. He couldn't wait no more. He went home. <laughs> what the hell? Who needs him anyhow? Uh, Should have brought well, him on. Well, I, I'm gonna. I'll start off with the send off. Listen, I want to thank all our customers out there for supporting us and supporting the hobby. And it's uh, without you guys uh, uh, buying and talking trains and uh, just having a good old time, we wouldn't be here. So uh, it's been a, a wonderful ride all the way, and we want to thank you. Just go to trainworld.com, check out our different sections. We got the pre-order section, new releases, and the um, specials. We're always adding items on specials. We just picked up a major, I don't want to say closeout, let's say a warehouse find. And um, we'll be sending out an email on that probably in another week or so. Okay, some really good stuff. So the prices are going to be insane. There you go. <laughs> All right. yeah. But thank you, guys. Thank you very much. Yep. Lou, Lou and Hal, thank you guys so much for uh, being on tonight. Uh, Hal, you, your, your magazines are just unbelievable. Everybody on here uh, enjoys and uh, probably everybody has a yeah. subscription already. And if not, they'll get one after tonight. And Lou, thank you very much. And they, they should have your book by now, but if they don't, uh, make sure you get a copy. Train World gets $100 for each book sold, right? Lou? Yes, you do. <laughs> <laughs> you get better in money. <laughs> better in money. Very good. Books. Thanks a lot. And uh, we'll see you again. You don't have to wait till New York. Whenever again. When I get some more new material, and I'll call you. There you go. And, and I'd like to thank our readers. Um, thanks for, for sticking with us. Uh, if you've been to trains.com lately and you've had some issues, we are aware of them. And keep keep coming because uh, there's a lot of great stuff you're going to see on there. Um, and, and we're going to get it all, all the teething problems fixed. And uh, thank Train World for its support of, of Classic Toy Trains. Uh, we, we, you know, couldn't do it without you guys. So, uh, yeah, thanks. Thanks to everybody. It, it all works. Thank you guys Hal, so much. Yeah. Hal, I want to see more new trains in there. More new trains. I know. And I'm working on it. You know what I'm looking for? And I found some. And this is part of the trains.com thing, too. I'm looking for some young guys to, to be in the magazine with modern trains. And mm -hmm. uh, uh, the, the let me see, March March issue was a good one. We've got some coming up this fall. So, yeah, uh, Modern Trains, we're working on it. Okay. Yeah. All right. So thank you again tonight. Uh, we really appreciate everyone joining. Tomorrow, Wednesday night, we have uh, Jeb Kriegel, Mega Steam Smoke Fluid, TW Trainworks on a whole layout tour. Thursday night is Lionel Bachman Williams, Atlas, MTH, Angela Trotta Thomas. 
Saturday at 9 a.m. in the morning. Grab your cup of coffee because we're going to do a club layout tour. So, so make sure you come to trainworld.com, Train World TV on YouTube, Facebook, uh, for all your York virtual needs. We got it squared away. We're also doing a super sale. So make sure you're signed up for our email sales. And if you're not signed up for email sales, go by text, trainworldtext.com, the first train company to do a texting service. <laughs> But have a good night, guys. Thank you for everything. We really Sorry, appreciate energy. it. Goodbye, okay. all. Goodbye. All right. Bye. Good night, guys. Thank you very much. Thanks. Mm -hmm.